All right, so what I'm about to do here is perform a small scale electronic test. As before we attach everything to our RC lawnmower, we wanna make sure we understand how the connections are supposed to be hooked up, how everything works. So if something happens when we do attach it to our RC lawnmower, we know exactly what to troubleshoot. So let me just explain some of the components that we have here. To the left, we have the transmitter. Then to the right of that, we have some motors. Below that, we have a Sabertooth, the 2X25 motor controller. Below that, I have some male servo connectors. To the right of that, I have a forehead and flathead screwdriver. Then I have some cable for our battery connections to the 12 volt battery. Above that, I have the receiver. And above that, I have some clamps that are going to help hold the motors in place when we start testing it. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna start with here is the Sabertooth motor controller. And what I'm gonna show you how to do first is how to configure these dip switches. So let me just go ahead and zoom in on that. All right, so as you can see here, I have switch one down, I have switch two up, and I have switch three up, I have switch four up, and switch five down, and switch six down. Now, the only switch that you really have to worry about here, if you are following my tutorial step by step and using similar parts that I recommended, for switch three, this may vary per person. If you're using other batteries other than sealed lead acid batteries, uh, you may have to switch down. So there is a wizard that actually explains or it gives you an, uh, an image of how your switches should be switched so I will be putting this on the website just in case, but it, for the most part, most of you all probably will have switched three up like I have it here. So basically look at your motor controller and make sure your switches are configured like you see before you. So now that our dip switches are configured correctly, now we can move on to our actual signal terminals. Now for this step, I'm gonna be working with the servo male connectors. I have two of these with the strip leads on the end. Then I'm gonna be working with the receiver. And then once we have those set up, we're gonna hook them to the motor controller. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one servo connector and I'm gonna place it inside the elevator channel for these pins here. All right, and I'm gonna take another one and I'm gonna plug it into the aileron channel. And something to note here, make sure that these, this exposed end is facing forward as you see before you. All right, so again, I'm using the elevator channel and the aileron channel. And again, make sure those exposed leads there are facing forward. All right, so what you wanna do next is twist the two red leads together, or the two positive leads together, and twist the two black leads or the two negative leads together. And you can solder these together if you wish to, if you don't plan on using these for anything else. All right, so coming back to our motor controller, as you can see here, for our signals, we have signal one, we have signal two, and we have a five volt and a zero volt. And the zero volt is gonna be for our negative connection, our black connection. The five volt is gonna be for the positive, our red connection. And for signal one, I'm gonna use the elevator for that terminal. And for signal two, I'm gonna use the aileron. So what I'm gonna start with first is the negative connection for the zero volts. Just gonna take a screwdriver and unscrew that. And as you can see, it's like a little door here that lets up. I'm gonna place that in there. And I'm just gonna screw that down. All right, once I screw it down, I shouldn't be able to take it out. I'm gonna do the same for the five volts. I'm gonna screw in the positive terminal into that or positive wire. For the 
with signals, just make sure you remember which one is going to what. Here is my elevator signal. So I have that going into signal one. for signal two gonna have my aileron going into that all right. all right so just check your wires make sure you can't really pull them out and just a close-up here again make sure you're Two negative connections are going to the zero volts, two positive connections are going to the five volts, and your elevator is going to the S1 or signal one, and S2 or signal two should be for your aileron. All right, so now that our receiver is now connected to our motor controller, now we can work on the motors and the batteries, but first we're gonna work on the actual motors. All right, so just for a close up here, as you can see, we have M1A, M1B, B+, B minus M2A, M2B. Now for M1A and M1B, this is for the same motor. We're gonna have one wire, the positive or the negative going to M1A and the other wire going to M1B. So this is just for one motor. Then we have B plus and B minus. That's just for our battery connections, positive and negative. Then we have M2A and M2B and that's just for our second motor. So the first thing again we're gonna start with is just hooking up our motors first before we supply any power to this unit. All right, so for this test, again, I'm just using two small motors, some motors that I purchased from Radio Shack, and they're gonna be very similar to our electric wheelchair motors. So, I'm gonna use this motor for our M1A and M1B, and it really doesn't matter if you have the red lead going to M1A or M1B, since this motor can turn in both directions. So, just unscrew the screw terminal enough so you can place the lead under it, and then just screw it back in place. And we're gonna do the same thing for the negative connection. And for our second motor, we're gonna have it for M2A and M2B. So here I just use some clamps again to hold my motors in place. This is optional, but it'll make it a lot easier to keep these motors stable while we're testing them. So next we're gonna actually hook up the battery to the motor controller and we can begin our test. All right, so for this step, connecting the battery to the motor controller, I'm using a 12 volt lead acid battery. This is critical that you actually hook up the positive side to the B plus and the negative side to the B minus because if you reverse the polarity, you can end up damaging your motor controller. So this is usually labeled on the battery. So again, be sure that you are hooking up the right lead to the right terminal on the motor controller. And we're gonna slide the leads under the screw terminals. Screw that back in place. sure it's nice and tight it can come out and we're gonna do the same thing for our positive side as soon as you have this red connection in, you should see a blue LED on your motor controller turn on if not you may have hooked up something wrong or there may be something else wrong in your connections all right so just another overview here I have motors hooked up I have my batteries hooked up and I also have my receiver connections hooked up. So now we can actually perform the test. So I'm gonna go ahead and get out my transmitter and we're gonna actually start seeing how our motors react. All right, so now I'm gonna turn on the transmitter and when I do, since my motor controller is supplying power to my receiver, the LED should come on to indicate that there is a connection between the transmitter and the receiver. So as I turn that on, you should see a LED pop on here as we do so that's a good sign so now I can go ahead and start controlling my motors 
So here I'm just using two channels. That's the reason we just have two servo connections to two pins here. So up, down is gonna be a channel and left and right is gonna be a channel. So if I press up, the motor should start to move. And I should be able to adjust the speed depending on how far I press the stick down. All right, and when I come back down to a, a zero position, they both should stop, and I should be able to do the same thing going in the backwards direction. And the same for left and right. And the same going to the right direction. So, so far everything's looking great. Another trick that you can use if you just wanted to have one motor moving while the other one is stationary, you can go up to these four corners that we have. So if I take it to the left hand corner, you see only one motor is moving. If I bring it down, the other motor stops and the other one starts moving. Same if I go to the other side. All right, so those are just a few tests you wanna perform. Here we're not really concerned about if we have every connection hooked up correctly as far as if this motor should be turning forward or backwards when I have this lifted, the stick lifted forward. We can adjust that when we actually start testing our wheelchair motors because we might have to change some of our leads so that when we have our stick going left, our RC lawnmower is turning left and so forth. So this was just a small scale test. So next we'll be hooking up our electric wheelchair motors so we can get an idea and jot down exactly where our leads need to be so that our RC lawnmower moves exactly how it should be depending on where this stick is positioned. Hello guys and ladies, that does conclude this video. Now I just wanna take a break from editing video and say a couple of things before I end this particular video. If you find these videos interesting or helpful, a way that you can show me that is by liking a video or leaving comments below the particular video that you found interesting or helpful. Or you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, like my Facebook page, follow me on Twitter, or you can share with others that you think may find this particular video interesting. So any of those things or many more or will actually show me that you guys appreciate all the time and effort that I'm putting into these videos and it also boosts my motivation to spend more effort and time with trying to make these more informative and trying to get them out on YouTube and on the web a lot quicker so with that said I will see you in the next video